everyone and welcome to the Atelier Nekuziki podcast. My name is Katie and this is episode 63 or 64. It is November 25th, 2018 and you can find me across social media as Atelier Nekuziki, Instagram, um, Ravelry, I'm Nekuziki Knits and my website is atelierneikuzuki.com where you can find my project bags for knitters and crocheters made from Japanese fabrics. Um, I'm back. I'm actually mostly on schedule for another podcast. Now I, I did, I know I said I'd record like Wednesday or Friday, but given how long um, the shop update <laughs> recording was and also like um, that other thing, like the shop update, like it was almost a three hour podcast, which I totally was not expecting. That's why it's actually uploaded in six parts is because that's how I ended up recording it. And um, once I actually got, got it all put together, I couldn't even actually upload the file to YouTube. It wouldn't even save on my phone. So, um, and I figured having it in a little bit more bite-sized pieces was probably better for viewing pleasure as well because sitting down to watch three hours with the someone talking at you can be a bit much in one stretch. So thank you to anyone who's actually viewed any part of that. <laughs> Um, there are over 300 new items in the shop. I realized that I also forgot to list the large wedge bags. So when I last checked, I was over 300 items and now I'll probably be quite a bit further into that uh, once all the large wedge bags are posted. Um, this weekend is Black Friday weekend. So a little bit of shop up news there is that I am doing a not a sale. It's actually feed the kitties sale. Um, how that works is that any uh, bag ex or accessory that is cat related or has a cat on it will actually donate a can of cat food to the Cochrane Humane Society that will be running well it's running until midnight uh, Mountain Standard Time on Monday November 26th so you still got a day so if you, you're viewing this podcast today that's what's happening um, not a traditional sale obviously no discounts or anything like that um, shipping is still if you purchase over a certain amount you'll get free shipping though um, so if you buy two small box bags, then in Canada that gets you free shipping. And now I know with the Canada Post Strikes that you might be concerned about receiving your items, but actually what's happening there is I am shipping by a courier, and that's just an automatic upgrade. You'll pay for Canada Post, and then I'll upgrade it to, um, I think the most bang for my buck is actually FedEx. So no PO boxes, unfortunately, for the next, like the foreseeable future until the Canada Post Strike is over. But uh, don't worry if you are a physical address. So, yay! Um, all right, and I'll have a little bit more. Actually, no, there's no more about the shop uh, after that. So all the shop news is at the front. So let's get into whips, foes, and chatter. Uh, I am currently wearing my Bradway shawl by Shannon Cook. I in the few episodes that I actually recorded this summer, I did chat about this shawl. Uh, the pink bits here are hand spun from a Sweet Georgia Club. And you can actually see the uh, texture in it quite nicely. And then the bits here, the grey and the natural colour are um, Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool before it became apparently not as nice. I don't know, I find this really nice. Uh, it did bleed a little bit in parts from the pink onto the white, but you can't actually tell, especially when I'm wearing it. I am having some problems deciding how to wear it. So normally I wear my shawls like nice and big and bandana style around this way, but it really doesn't it doesn't look very good this way. It makes me look very chunky around the neck. <laughs> um, but I don't normally wear my shawls to the back, so I don't know. I'll I'll figure it out. It's nice and comfy and squishy though. It's mostly garter. Um, in here it's got twisted rib here and then a texture section here. So this is actually one of the patterns that I got my first year at Knit City so I'm glad I was finally able to knit it. I'm also super happy because I totally spun the uh, pink yarn with the intention of using it in this shawl so I'm really happy that that turned out. Um, so that's what I'm wearing. What I'm knitting is I'm knitting a bunch of gift knits. So right now the secret knitting is definitely taking over. Some of it's not so secret, but I don't want to show it on the podcast and completely give it away. Um, just in case the 
recipients are watching, but I am working on a pair of socks in the Regia Fleurmania to go with the other Regia Fleurmania socks that I knit. This one will be mine, this one will be for Dallas, and it'll be like a matching, non-matching pair. So I'm really excited to get those done because he likes his hand-knit socks um, in his current position. He's basically in a, an office job kind of position currently where he's working. Um, so like a control panel operator. Um, so kind of a uh, an office job. As office as you can get up with there without being an actual admin assistant or uh, office engineer. So um, he likes his socks, which is awesome because I can't really knit him much else. Um, although we have been chatting about the fact that I sh could probably knit him another sweater. I'm thinking in Barocco Vintage um, because it'll be cooler. It's got like a wool acrylic nylon blend. Um, this summer I actually lost the sweater I knit for him. I had knit him one but he never wore it so I wore it um, and it was in our hiking backpacks and someone took the hiking backpacks out of our truck. So um, whatever the backpacks can actually be replaced and everything like that but the annoying part is they took it and took the sweater too. They pulled everything else out. They left our hiking boots even, but they took the backpacks and the sweater. So anyway, I figured that now would be a good time maybe to knit another. And we're still close enough size that if I were to knit one and he doesn't wear it again, then I'll just wear it. So best of both worlds. <laughs> um, the exciting bit is, so there's that whip. There are, I have three gift knits right now on the needles. No, two gift knits on the needles half of which is one of which is half done another that is in my mind um and then i also need to cast on and knit one more as well actually two more probably so that will be the next few weeks um but i did push and get some selfish knitting done so i finished my tinder cardigan so this is the tinder cardigan by George jared flood I knitted on the gauge needles because I got perfect gauge with the yarn that I have and I'll tell you about that in a moment. It's got this really cool just a little bit of texture pattern. Uh, reminds me very much of bamboo and then um, the sleeves are mattress stitched in so you get this really cool effect with the, um, the one by one rib that you do on the sleeve as you're fit, like doing your decreases. Uh, reverse stockinette sleeve. I know there's a couple holes here. I'll actually probably fix those up. But at the same time, I'm like, whatever. I crocheted seamed the, this, okay, so this is knit from the bottom up in pieces. Uh, I started with one sleeve and then I did the back and then I did one front and then the other sleeve and then the other front. Uh, so I finished the front. This is partly why I <laughs> held off recording was because I knew if I did, I would actually finish this. So I finished the front on Friday night, I think. Maybe, or s yesterday morning. No, it would've been Friday night because I started seaming it Friday night and then I finished seaming it yesterday. So you have to seam it all. With the sleeves, I did a crochet seam because you're not gonna see it. Um, one side of the body, front to back, I did a mattress stitch seam think is actually this one. The right front went on with a mattress stitch and then the left front to back went on with a... Oh, I can't actually tell. Anyway, one was done with a crochet seam, one was done with a mattress stitch seam. I hate seaming so the faster I can do it the better. This one is the mattress stitch seam. So left front went on with a mattress stitch, right front went on with the crochet stitch. You can't tell um, the only place that I did do the mattress stitch was actually on the sleeves because otherwise I wouldn't have gotten this nice like diagonal with the rib. Um, as far as I know the collar is as high as it's supposed to be. I still have to clip ends, whatever. And then the button band is only like an inch and a quarter so it's not actually that wide. But anyway, and it's long. I actually did it long enough for my body because my torso is really long and so my arms are really long to be proportionate to the torso. Um, and then this is also supposed to be a long cardigan, but I did it guys. Um, so I think I knit 
I know I did 104 repeats of this, or 104 rows of the pattern. So 26 repeats of the pattern, plus I think it's four, four and a half inches of ribbing. Um, and that I think gave me about 20 inches to the underarms. Um, also raglan sleeves really fit me well, so that's nice really slimming because it's so long and it is a tighter fitting sweater. I did screw up and knit the back so I'm technically a size 6 in this or the 6th size <laughs> but I screwed up and knit the back in the 5th size so I was 4 stitches too small but whatever. It just fits smaller. It's got more negative ease than planned. The uh, sleeves are also very slim fitting so if that is going to be a problem I would suggest going up a size in the sleeves. It's usually a problem on me, but since I've started spin and yoga, I've actually my arms have thinned out, um, which is a good thing because this does fit really tight. I knit this out of West Coast Color and Carding um, Homegrown. So this is yarn spun by or from sheep that Lynn has raised. I got it at Knit City, and as you can see, I used. I didn't even like use up the whole cone. So the plan was I actually needed a cone and two 50 gram skeins, which I still have, and the cone yarn. So I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do with the rest of this. But I figured that that, like, this is a really good deal. It's, I won't mention price, but like this was super economical. Um, the yarn bloomed, I should have actually taken a photo because um, the yarn on the cone still has the spinning oil in it. And you can kind of see that, it's kind of like, it actually looks oily and a little bit stringy almost. And it did kind of look like that in the sweater until I blocked it. So I ran it through some hot water and swished it around. You should have seen the dust that came out of it, holy. Uh, I washed it in my bathtub actually because it's so big. Um, but yeah, it bloomed gorgeously, but it didn't lose the texture. It actually, swishing it around to get the oils out actually helped to solidify the seams a little bit. You can see that it kind of felt it a little bit. The other thing is is that it helped it bloom so it doesn't have like a massive halo but it definitely went fuzzier than uh, what it was when I was knitting with it and you can kind of yeah you can kind of see that right there right here so yeah so I, I'm loving it and I already have buttons for it because I went to stash would have been November 11th weekend so a couple weekends ago now and I knew that I was gonna have this sweater done pretty darn soon I got mother of pearl buttons for it because it's a fairly like beyond the texture it's actually a fairly simple sweater so I figured I could showcase some nice buttons on it um, let's see if they actually fit through the holes because that is not something that I've tested so far they do yeah and look at like that's just gonna be really nice and nice and classy it's not very often that I find buttons right off the well actually no never mind I find buttons right off the back quite a bit because uh, I have a fairly good idea of what I want I can't I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do it that way or if I'm going to do it with the darker side Ooh, I think it's going to be the darker side because you can actually see the iridescence quite well on the dark side and it doesn't make it pop quite as much as just the white one or two two one. It's like being up the optometrist. Anyway, I'll make that decision over the next couple days. Um, it dried really fast. I only washed it like at, I think, probably 10.30 last night and it was dry by this morning. Now what I did is I laid it flat to dry. I didn't dry it on blocking boards um, because realistically the only thing I had to do was actually widen the body a bit. So I put it on my IKEA drying rack and then I set it over a vent so that it had we keep our exhaust fan going, so it had cold air blowing over it um, all night, and then it um, could just like just dry basically without heat, I guess. Um, there's a couple knots in it that I'm gonna just have to pull through to the other side, like on the sleeve. There's one on the back, but realistically, like there's over a thousand meters on that cone, so I'm not gonna complain about a couple knots, especially for the price I paid for it. Um, and I did knit that out of one of my knot bags. So the comb fit in here spectacularly well. You can see that my sock yarn is in there right now. But yeah, so the comb fit in there. Because it was knit in pieces, I could just 
carry the pieces around that I wanted. It fit awesome in here. Um, so like super happy with that. Now I do have all of this obligation knitting, but um, I am going to cast on a new thing here soon. If you haven't heard of it, there is the Dunder Knit podcast with Caroline. She's out of the UK and I've really been enjoying it. She's only about eight episodes in, so it's a good time to join her, test it out, see if you like it. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I did not go through and watch the two hour Rhinebeck episode. I'm sorry, Caroline, could not do it. <laughs> But I did watch the bits with the uh, knitting and everything. But her podcast is actually called Vicariously Knitting. because, And I'm sure most of us have felt this. You go through a feed and you're like, oh, I like this and I like this and I like this. Like Instagram or you go to an event and you like fall down hard about some projects. I know the one that I fell down hard on um, at Knit City was the Fever Dreams. I think it was Fever Dreams. It's by Spin Cycle Yarns. And it was absolutely stunning and I want it so bad. So I'm stalking their site for um, for the yarns. Um, maybe if I remember, I'll put a picture of it at the end of the podcast, but it's absolutely spectacular. Um, and I really, it was knit out of the same yarn that I knit the Aries hat out of and that yarn is stunning. I guess that's the option that I could always spin yarn for it because that's the idea of that yarn I can't remember the name of it guys except that spin cycle um, is that it's barber pulled so it's marled or barber pulled whichever you would prefer to call it um, to look like hand spun so maybe that's what I should do nah probably not <laughs> anyway so my vicarious knitting for the past few years has been that I want to knit the Hitofude cardigan um, which lots of people have knit but I've got the perfect color for it Shock and amazement that like that this color would pull my eye, <laughs> but it's uh, coquette. Uh, it's Tosh Madeline Tosh Tosh Merino light, so it is their uh, singles fingering weight. But it is one of the suggested yarns for the Hito Fude. And like, look at that color. And if you've been watching a while, you'll remember my pink hair and everything like that. And this color is just absolutely spectacular. And actually showing up quite. Oh, that's blowing it up. There, that's better. Um, anyway, I've had this for probably, I think I bought it before we moved into the house. I bought it before the dollar or just as the dollar went under par because I bought it at what would have been a lower cost point because of the exchange. <laughs> so I think I got this for under, well, I'm not going to mention it anyway, but it's also one of the suggested yarns for the Hito Fude. I've wanted the Hito Fude. I, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to ball this up or wind it up. Um, I do not have the US 4s that are suggested for it, but I have a feeling because of the lace I'm going to want to go up and needle anyway. So I'm going to swatch on a 5 and a 6 and I'm going to join the Dunder Knit um, Knit Along, which is Blame Dunder Knit Along um, because people are blaming her for enabling them to cast on the things that they've been like slathering over for a while. <laughs> And so I'm going to join in because I figure why not? I've wanted to knit the Hito Fude obviously longer than like, it's been longer than when I bought the yarn. I just bought the yarn and then realized that it would be perfect for the Hito Fude. Um, so I figured this is the time to do it. Um, obviously with a little bit of obligation knitting, it won't be as fast. It is lace. I am not the most proficient at lace. So, you know, all the things. Um, and it's not like I don't have a ton of whips on the work in the works, but this is using up stash. So it's a virtuous um, cast on, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so, because also the another part of that is if I cast it on, then I can, uh, I don't have as much yarn to move into the studio when everything, like into the yarn room once everything moves into the studio, right? That's how this works. Anyway, I really like this color. It's coquette. Um, it's a really nice, like, it looks like pink with almost a black or like really deep red overwash. So I'm excited for this. Uh, all right, so the other bits are, I have been listening. I haven't listened to a lot, but I've listened to some things. Um, I listened to The Trader's Kiss by Aaron Beattie, which is the first in the trilogy. 
I really enjoyed it. Um, it took a, it followed a different um, female protagonist, and I really enjoyed that. Um, second book is out. The third book will be out in July, so I got to figure out how to track that down because I listened to the first one on Libby, the um, library's like Overdrive account, basically. It's an app so that I can just listen in that instead of having to figure out a bunch of other technical jargon. Um, and then I listened to two NSFW or Not Safe for Work books um, by Maya Banks. The first one was Understood and the second one was Overheard. Now, mature warning or content warning on both of those, obviously, and they're two and a half hour novellas, so they get right into it. Just fair warning. Um, I didn't enjoy them as much as some of the other ones, but they were nice little fluff interludes. Right now, I'm actually listening to The Untamed Bride by Stephanie Lawrence. Again, another uh, mature content warning, but the really cool thing about this one is it's being read by a male narrator. And it's not very often that, I, or at least I haven't encountered a lot of audiobooks in my small perusal of what I've been listening to. Uh, with male narrators and particularly as far as I know I haven't there's not very many male narrators for romance novels it totally suits the content though um, it actually really makes the story very enjoyable to listen to I'm having a lot of fun with it it's a region Regency kind of historical fiction um, and like it's got a really lush setting so I'm really enjoying it actually um, there hasn't been any mature content. Well, okay. There's been suggestions of what is desired for mature content, but nothing like... There has been no sex yet. There we go. Um, we're all adults here, right? Well, if you're not, don't read it. It's not for you yet. When you're older. Um, so yeah, so that's what I've been reading or listening to. Actually, it's all been listening. I haven't been done any reading. Um, I do have some books from the library and coming from the library that I do want to sit down and actually partake of here soon. But what I'm really enjoying about the audio or the um, electronic resource books is the fact that it doesn't, like, my iPad or my phone uh, mean that it's hands-free pretty much. Like, even on, if I'm reading an ebook on my iPad, being able to just flick through the pages is a lot easier than trying to hold a book open um, on my lap which is one of the struggles I had because I do do a lot of reading and knitting so it is slowly m making me think that maybe I should actually get an ebook I haven't completely decided but um, yeah I'm thinking that it's probably a good idea simply because we do so much traveling too and it'd be way easier to carry an ebook reader along than a um, like actual physical physical books so we'll see um, especially with the rise of ebooks at libraries too it um, because the drawback for me that I originally had was I didn't want to have to purchase all the books because they cost the same or nearly as much usually as the physical books so why would I <laughs> but being able to borrow ebooks through the library sometimes easier than the paper books um, is, has definitely been an advantage so we'll see maybe I'll put it on my list for Christmas Alice, if you're listening. <laughs> um, let's see what else. We did actually, when Dallas is off on the staycation, I forgot to mention this, but we did actually get through quite a bit of anime. Uh, we watched some of the new series, like, well, and we're watching watching some of the new series. So we shotgunned um, How Not to Summon a Demon Lord. Now, this is kind of a, it's in the category I'd put it of H-E, which is suggestive content um, without anything exactly explicit um, and then we've been watching I got reincarnated as a slime which is hilarious and then we've been also watching uh, Goblin Slayer which I do agree with some people's assessment that when it started it was um, very much its appeal was based on its shock value uh, because the first few episodes, especially the first episode, are extremely brutal. Um, especially for an anime. Like, it actually has a content warning on it, which I've never seen on an anime. Um, 
but it's getting better as it's gotten further in. It feels like it's a slow burn um, and it'll just, it's going to improve. Um, all the anime that I watch, we subscribe to Crunchyroll and so that's how we've been watching a lot of this. It does a lot of simulcasts. Um, I really, I think their um, translators are really good actually for their subtitles and everything like that because we watch all of our anime subtitled now. Uh, which is really cool as I've been studying more and getting more vocabulary I've a I've been able to understand more of the actual spoken Japanese instead of just getting it from the subtitles so sometimes now I'm able to listen and understand instead of just going straight into being um, like I'm able to understand and then double check my understanding with the actual um, subtitles so that's been really fun what else did we watch? There's a couple others we've been watching and I can go, I'll can i go into a, lot, a little bit more once Dallas is actually home this week so we've got some catch up to do. Um, he's been working some overtime so he's gone for 10 days and then he'll be back on Tuesday which is always exciting. So he's got an exam next Monday though so this week we'll be mostly studying but we will be we have to go out and see Fantastic Beasts. I have yet to spoil myself on it which is actually kind of astonishing. Um, and then I'll be going out to see, well, we have to go out and see Wreck the Internet as well. Ralph Wreck Wrecks the Internet, or Wreck-It Ralph too. I really enjoyed the first one, and the second one looks awesome. I mostly just want to see it for the princess scene, um, which was in the trailer, so that's not a spoiler. Um, because it's the first time that all the princesses have been in one space, because normally they have to occupy their own spaces, and all of this, so... Sounded like a cat was wandering around, but apparently not. So there's that. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Next weekend we're going to go get our tree for Christmas and figure out where we're going to actually put it. <laughs> um, so I'm actually tidying the house right now so that I can put the rest of the Christmas decorations up. We are, I wait until after New uh, Remembrance Day to put decorations up just because but uh, we left our Christmas lights up all year round, so I turned them on like sharp on November 12th. Um, and generally I do end up decorating the house around this point. So I'm gonna change a few things up this year, but I'll share some photos once I've got it all set up. Got some kitschy stuff and got some more traditional things. So it's always really fun. Um, let's see, yeah, I hope you guys all have a good week. I'll record again next week. Hopefully I'll have not all secret knitting to show you and I will chat with you soon. Thanks everyone and have an awesome day. Bye.